All right, I'm back. But this time I'm all by myself. And because I, I had one more little carving sitting on my desk waiting to be carved and I figured why not get it done tonight um, so this one this one won't take me that long hello 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 so um, this one won't take me very long and uh, just because I'm gonna carve out this little dolphin guy so if you guys want to talk to me about anything or chat or just sit and watch as I carve just let me know and I will respond and talk to you hope everybody is enjoying their evening all right and here we go actually I'm gonna I'm gonna start with the eyeball first as I like to do. Back to the V-gouge. I thought I wanted to go to my little U-gouge, but I want to make sure I get that little area perfectly. Now onto my U-gouge, so I can finish out this little thing. Little, little flower around the dolphin's eye, like I like to do. Carving small is difficult. That's done. Actually, needs a little highlight in the eye. Uh, any tips for when you do uh, carve small? Um, have practice carving big. <laughs> So, I mean, just, just try and see what you can do. Um, I, my advice would be use linoleum when you want to carve small. That's what I use when, I'm, when I want to carve really small is linoleum. Also, don't, let, don't, don't get frustrated when something doesn't go your way. Just kind of try to, try to work with what happened. It just works slow. So I'm working on a series of small little carvings that I will be uh, debuting at the I said small, I should say tiny. Tiny carvings 
that I will be debuting at the Tiny Doors birthday party at July 12th at the East Atlanta Village Farmer's Market, I believe. I'll put information about that out tomorrow, though, so keep an eye out for that information. But that's what these are for and where these are going. Um, I've got six little marine mammals that I will be doing for those. You've seen the whale and the narwhal and now I've got a dolphin and what else? The, the comet or right over the figure? Oh yeah, I can come over here. Is that better? Let me, let me scoot my chair over. This guy's pretty small. He's about six inches, probably about six inches by three or four inches in size. It's pretty tiny. here and I'm gonna zigzag one of my favorite things to do is the zigzag oh no problem thanks for thanks for letting me know it's difficult to see sometimes I can get caught up in my little uh, my little carving world here Even, yes, even hunger. It is, it is a very relaxing thing to do. There have been days when I have, uh, I have just been carving and I skipped most of my meals, if not all of them, just to keep working. So I was up against either a deadline or a personal, personal goal that I had set for myself. Uh, you know, I was in the zone, and good things were happening, and I didn't want to jinx it by stopping and maybe letting it all go away. Look at his little tongue. You don't see it yet, but you will soon. It's funny, sometimes I won't eat, but then other times I'll, I'll uh, you know, work on one small thing and then go upstairs, grab like a little handful snack, 
just to get my brain refocused and then, and then start something new. So some days I don't eat, other days I'm snacking all day. The, the squishy stuff to keep my blocker moving so it is a um, uh, what's it like drawer liner for, for kitchen drawers and the reason I have it is because my carving desk is actually at an incline um, and it's it's so if I had if I didn't have the stuff on it the block would literally fall to the floor but since I have my, uh, I have the, what's it called, the, the drawer liner here, it keeps my block from falling when I let go of it. But my desk is actually at like a 30 degree incline. It's, yeah, like I said, it's just drawer liner. Um, you can get it like Target, places like that. Does it help to carve on an inclined surface as it does to draw? Um, it just makes my back not hurt as much when I'm like, uh, I still I still lean over my work, um, but I'm not leaning as much over my work. So it just helps my back not uh, hurt as much at the end of a, a session of carving. It's one of the things that allows me to carve a little bit longer. Yeah, carving and, well, doing anything for, with repetitive motion puts a, a toll on your body or where you're in a position for an extended period of time. Even just sitting at the computer, typing. Um, so I'm just trying to, min I try to minimize my body pain. That's why I wear a hand brace. That's why I wear a glove. For sure, I'm, I'm sure I'm definitely not the first person to ever carve on an inclined surface, so go for it. I just have a little drafting desk. So I think there's a little confusion going on here. So while this is a carved, uh, this is a carved block. This is going to be one of my carved and painted pieces, like what you see with my inking videos, um, like the the monsters that I posted recently. So with those, I never print them. Um, the color that you're seeing with them is actually painted on. And it wouldn't, it, it's not going to affect the print if I, if I was to uh, apply it to paper. 
I that's that's kind of my version of a one of a kind original piece of work from me. Um, but yeah, those are never they're never printed. They're just on blocks that you could use for printing. Hand brace and glove, or is a type of glove? No, it's all it's all in. Let's see, it's all one. You can see here. I've got a hand brace and then a mechanics glove. So the two different pieces. Look at his little melon head. I don't know if it is it. I don't know. I'm not great at dolphins. Um, I know with beluga whales that their little, like the their forehead area is called their melon, and that's where like the echolocation and everything comes out of. I assume it's the same with dolphins. Does anyone know if their, you know, their forehead's called a melon, too? I hope it is. I love that name for that that part of the beluga whale. Look at the little melon head. I know weird um, beluga whale facts because I like going to the Georgia Aquarium here in Atlanta. Um, and this is less of a beluga whale fact and more of a polar bear fact. Um, and I think it's quite fascinating. It's a little, you know, it's on the on the side of what do you call it? Um, nature and the food chain because it involves polar bears hunting beluga whales but it's one of the most fascinating things i've ever heard about the animal kingdom and i'm going to share it with you right now um so polar bears right they are a hundred percent white except for their eyes and their nose and so when they're hunting the way they hunt beluga whales is that they sit at the top of the uh you know, the holes in the ice that the beluga whales come out of to breathe. And to be camouflaged from them, they, they cover up their nose with their hands. So when the beluga whales come up, all they see is white, like the snow and the ice and everything behind them. Uh, and they don't see the polar bears and then the polar bears just Boom, right there, which is sad for the beluga whale, but necessary for the polar bear. So, it's one of the most fascinating animal facts I've ever heard. It's actually really smart, too. Hopefully, that didn't bum anybody out. get this so I'm gonna do this to get the line this little stripe on the side of the dolphin I want to add a little bit of color some dolphins do have a little bit of variation and like a stripe on the side 
Um, I think those are common dolphins. Because the name, I think, is what they're called. Because I know the bottlenose dolphins don't have that like little yellow stripe on the side. Will we get to see it printed tonight? No, I'm unfortunately not. This will not be printed tonight. Um, and probably not even tomorrow. So I've got a couple other things I need to do um, tomorrow. And I probably won't be able to get to this. But probably sometime this week, I will be um, painting and inking these. I don't print them. the stripe to kind of go to make this go away a little bit sooner this top version of it there we go a little bit nicer all right and now the little dorsal fin this is dangerous guys don't do this one of the first things they teach you about carving when you're doing relief prints is never carve towards your fingers or your hands or your body um, but I've been doing it for a while and I sometimes I have to cheat so right there when I took that corner I was carving towards myself because it's literally the only way I can hold the block and apply enough pressure but try to avoid that in your own work don't do this at home don't try this at home that's what that's what they say oh man I messed it up Round in the finish line here. How do I cut out my block shapes? Uh, I use a scroll saw. I draw my image onto the board with a sharpie, and then I use a jigsaw to cut the you know the the rough shape out, and I use a scroll saw to get the tight the tight shape. The snails were fun, thank you. I like doing those snails. Maybe I'll do more snails. I did I did octopuses and I did snails um, for the small blocks and I did a lot of other things. I forget what else I did. I did sharks. So I think I think he's. He, I think he's done. My little, my little elephant, or what do I call him, elephant? My little dolphin. He's done. Da, 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 da. This is the, the series that I've got going on now. Are my marine mammals, and I've only got six of them. It's going to be a smaller series, and I can be twenty. He has a speck on his forehead. It's probably, probably just a little piece. Does it look like this? I like this. So. You have my shark sticker on my laptop. Cool. Alright guys. 
I think he is done. So thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. I'm gonna sign off now. But thanks for watching me carve out this little uh, this little dolphin guy. I'll talk to you guys later.